today I want to talk to you today about time management. I'm going to say it again. Time management. I, I saw an article that I want to just kind of like share before I even bring the word, because I think this article really says a whole lot about what is really going on when you when you re, when you relate let's just say yourself to to the time that you're given it says here the currency of time the currency of time is all is like relating time to money the currency of time matter of fact it says the concept of time is elusive because well it stands still for no man time stands still for no man beyond time being an arbitrary number derived from the earth's axle rotation and orbital revolution around the sun it is also the life currency it is the life currency that you can never regain after spending it it is the life currency that you can never regain after spending it. You know, you, you know, we, we, we've come to the end of the year. And, and many of us are probably hoping that next year or the new year will be better than this year. Because I'm sure some of us and many of us have, you know, the year might have started off pretty good, but, but, but we've met some challenges in this year. Some challenges when it comes to sickness, some challenges when it comes to relationship, some challenges when it comes to our finances, some challenges when it comes just to stuff. Stuff have, let's just say, parked, you know, <laughs> in our in our home, stuff have parked, you know, on our job, in our churches, in our ministry, stuff have parked in us that is designed to stop us to keep us from thriving, to keep us from growing, evolving into that man, that woman God sent us here to be. And many today have made the mistake of placing more value on their money, on their things, on stuff, than they do on their time. And you cannot make the mistake of placing more value on stuff i'll put it like that stuff is going to cover everything money you know all this other stuff that we accumulate our cars our homes and you know we have to be able to see the 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 the, the value the value of time the value of time see time is one of our most valuable commodities now when i say commodities Time is an intangible commodity, whereas money, your home, your car, your stuff, your things, these are tangible. These are things you can touch, you can feel, you can see. But time is a commodity that, let's just say, that you cannot, you know, you cannot stop, you cannot change it. Time marches on, there's a saying, time marches on. See, you can always make more money, but you can never make more time. You can't add another day, another hour, another second to the 24 hours that you're given each and every day that you've been here. You should be, and all of us, to tell you the truth, all of us should be thanking God for every second, every, not just every minute, every day, every year, every second he has given us to be here to be here, to, to be a part of something that is so much bigger than ourselves. Are you hearing me? This is bigger than you. This is bigger than me. And God wants us to know, to see, to understand that he's called us for such a time as this. God didn't make no mistake. The Bible says he knew you before the foundation of the world. So know if you're here today, you are not an accident. You are not a mistake. And God has given you amount of, uh, an, an amount of time to do what he sent you here to do. Now, if you don't value the time, if you don't place value on time, 
you're going to squander it. You're going to waste it. How do we squander and waste time? Well, sometimes we have to look at some of the people <laughs> we was hanging with. I said, were hanging with, used to hang with. Some of the places where we used to go, some of the things that we used to do, all a waste of time, all a waste of time. And then some of the things that we've even done even to ourselves, because we can look at other people, other things, and, and we can cast the blame on, on them and on it. But the real deal is because of the choice that we made, we can, let's just say, do more damage to ourselves than anyone else. Even the devil can't stop you. The devil, the Bible says, is a defeated foe. We have the victory. Why? Because we are in Christ. Jesus, those of us who believe in him. So we should be thanking God for every second, every day of our life. We should be thanking God. Why? Because we're a part of something much bigger than ourselves. See, tomorrow is never guaranteed. See, and, and, and when you look at how some people live their life, and I should say, you know, these days that we're living, we, we act like we're going to be here forever. We, 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 let's just say, we downplay the, the value of time. So, so we have to do today what we can do to better ourselves. Yeah, I, I want to, I want to, I want to upgrade. I want to, I want to, let's just say, improve on what God has blessed me with, has given me. You have all you need. Believe me when I tell you now, you have all you need to do what God has sent you here to do. It's already in you. You are a walking gift. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency and power may be of God and not of ourselves. And we can spend so much time looking outside of ourselves for that extra something, that special something, when that special something is already in you. Lord Jesus, first of all, the Lord says, once you, once you were saved, he's given you his Holy Spirit who will lead you and guide you into all truth. Are you hearing me? So the thing about it is now, if you're not, if you're not capitalizing on, 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 on this truth, which is the gospel of Jesus, the gospel, that, that, that word of God, if you're not capitalizing on that word of God, because that word of God is going to really put you on a pathway that will lead to greater, lead to more. God want to bless you and he want to bless you real good. I'm not talking about a sometime God. I'm not talking about a God that don't know how to do ooh, ooh, what needs to be done in your life. I'm talking about the God who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what you can actually think according to the power that is in you. And we know that power is faith. Faith to believe that your God can do anything but fail. Can't lie, can't die, water can't drown him, and fire can't. Uh, burn them up and time can't wear him out but if you take a look in the mirror you can see your aging lord jesus i'm talking about a god that doesn't age but we are aging why because time is taking an effect upon us upon our bodies now in our spirit i mean, you know that's another thing but this body is not meant to be here forever this body is 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 going to deal with the hardships of living in a fallen world. You're going to deal with the hardships of sin. Lord Jesus, we're not in a perfect environment. Adam and Eve was in a perfect environment. They made a bad choice, a bad decision that got them cast out of the Garden of Eden. That perfect environment, walking with God. Lord Jesus. And until we can see the importance of valuing our time. And also, just based upon what I said about Adam and Eve, paying attention to the choices and decisions that we're making. Are you hearing me? See, matter of fact, what I should be doing today is I should be asking myself, am I doing what am I doing with the time? Or let me put it another way. 
is what I'm doing right now worth my time? Is what I'm doing right now worth my time? In other words, we need to really take a look at what we're doing each and every day and ask ourselves, is what I'm doing worth my time? The time that I'm going to spend doing it. Because Lord knows, like I said, some of the people, some of the places, some of the things that we did, it wasn't worth the time that we gave it. But until we can, let's just say, uh, uh, raise the the, the 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 value that we place on time because we you know we we get up like we supposed to get up we we act like everything is you know is geared or 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 is going to take place around us and really we God has blessed us to be a part of something as I said that is so much bigger than ourselves and God wants to use you as an instrument, a tool in his hand to make a difference in the kingdom, to make a difference in your family, to make a difference in your, on your job, in your, in, your, in, in your community, in the body of Christ. So we all need to, I would say, pay more attention to how we're managing our time. Saints, you have to pay more attention to how you're managing your time. See, I think that this is a very good message for today, mainly because, hey, we're at the end of this year. We're getting ready to go into the into a new year. And you know, you don't want to make the mistake. See, they say you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to keep getting what you've always got. And I, without question, I know some of you are tired tired of dealing with what some of this stuff you're dealing with i know some of you are just hey man i'm i'm ready to i'm ready to throw in the towel i'm i'm i just don't want to deal with this no more lord i'm 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 i i i i need a change i i need a breakthrough i need something that's going to revive me pick me up turn me around and get me motivated and focus on that something that can bring glory to your name but i'm having a hard time why because maybe I'm not managing my time in a productive way, in a way whereas it would bring glory to God. I believe scripture says in James, uh, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Submit to God. Have we totally submitted to God? See, how well are you managing your time? See, we, we really have to take a look at how well we are managing our time. You see, because if you're looking to make some changes in your life, as you prepare to step into the new year, you're going to have to do a better job when it comes to managing your time. Man, we can look at how we might want to conduct business with other people, how we might want to do this and do that, but we have to really pay a little bit more attention to how we're managing our time. Look at this in Luke chapter 14, verse 28. Jesus said this, for which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost? Does not first sit down and count the cost? Whether he or she would have enough to complete it. That tower building your life, man. Oh, you're building, you're hey, age. Oh, hey, we're, we're called. Matter of fact, I believe uh, in, in the book of beginnings of uh, Genesis, uh, you know, we're called to multiply and increase. God wants us to multiply and increase. You know, God and Jesus says he wants us to occupy until he comes and so on and so forth. If you're not, if you're not building, and that's what this is about, multiplying and increase. And this, and he's given us enough time to do, believe it or not, he's given you enough time to do what he's called you to do. He wouldn't actually, he wouldn't tell you, or he wouldn't, let's just say, give you this assignment if he wasn't going to give you the time needed to make it happen, to manifest it, to materialize it, to do it. You can do it, my sister. You can do it, my brother. But if you don't know what you're here to do, you need to go back and have a little talk with Jesus. You need to speak. You have to have a little talk with the, with the manufacturer. Count the course. Desiring to build a tower. Desiring to build a life. Lord Jesus. 
want to build, want to build, want to build, want to make happen. And many, instead of building, they're, 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 they're breaking down, they're, 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 you know, they're demolishing the good that they might have started out doing. Someone that was had a good life, had things going uh, well in their lives, but what happened? They picked up a drug or they got around the wrong people and all of, all of the good that they were doing is now reversed and now they find themselves going in another direction. And I'm not talking about up, but going down. Why? Because of a bad choice and a bad decision. People, places, and things. See, and, and, and in this particular text here, this verse here, Jesus wanted to prevent people that started out following him. He didn't want them to fall by the wayside. He didn't want them to stop following him. Are you hearing me? See, we have to be in this for the long haul. I'm going all the way with Jesus. That, that's it. I mean, see, when I was younger, I didn't know no better. And I was, and I kind of came up in church because my mama made sure I went to church, but I really didn't have an understanding of, you know, uh, uh, of really what church was all about. Because I was, I, well, you know, they like to say we were young and dumb and just, you know, wanting to do, you know, what we wanted to do as a young man. I wanted to do what I wanted to do as a young man. And what I thought was going to be best for me but not realizing as I got into the word and as I, and matter of fact, I know myself, I had a great fall and that fall woke me up and I realized I needed to come back to Jesus. And, and I really have to thank my mama. I mean, those of us who still have our mothers and fathers and just have family, you need to thank them, especially if they made sure you was part of the church and getting that word because my God, my God, I, I had a foundation that didn't break, are you hearing me? Even though I turned and went another way, even though I did some things that wasn't, let's just say, uh, conducive to proper growth and development, spiritually, God never, oh, he never let me go. I feel, I see it. I don't just feel it, I see it. I see his hand on my life. And you want to be able to see God's hand on your life. You want to be able to, to, to let's just say, to, to hang in there, even when the going gets tough, when it gets rough. You want to be able to stand up under the pressure, under the different things that are going to come into your life to try you, to break you down. Hey, hey, troubled marriages, relationships. All kind of stuff is going to happen. Sicknesses and things are going to hit our bodies. I'm not just talking about from the outside. I'm talking about hitting us from the inside. Whatever. The real deal is know that the Lord is with you. Know that God is faithful. He doesn't want any of us to fall by the wayside. See, understand now, your expectations of life will shape your experiences. It's going to shape your life. It's going to shape the things that you do and the things that you want to accomplish and the things that you want to achieve. Your expectations. What are you believing God for? Matter of fact, the Bible says, speak those things that are not as if they are. See, and many of us that don't realize, according to Solomon, death and life is in the power of the tongue and you will eat the fruit thereof. So we have to realize it's not about speaking death over ourselves. It's not about killing the dream. It's about growing the dream. It's about stepping into the, into the vision. It's about holding on to the precious promises of God. That experience, oh man, these, these experiences are designed to shape us, mold us, and make us better. I'm talking about even the bad ones because it should drive you to want to, wanna, if nothing else, to draw closer to Jesus. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to get closer to him, closer to him. Those of us who diligently seek him, the Bible says he's a rewarder of those of us who diligently seek him. See, when it comes to what you're working on, have you considered the course? Have you counted the course when it comes to how much time you will need to complete that, that, something, that project, whatever it is you're working on? Or have you counted or considered the course when it comes to the people that you're hanging with, the places where you're going? The, 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 hey, man, do you know how much time we can give to Facebook? 
Look at how much time we can give to Facebook, how much time we can give to our television sets. And when you look at television, you're looking at all those commercials and commercials and commercials and commercials and commercials. I mean, on medicine, on this, on that, and this and that, and food, and, and true, Lord Jesus. I mean, the restaurants and this and that. I mean, and oh man, it's so much stuff. We're being bombarded with so much information. That's why you have to learn how to manage your time. Because in the process of managing your time, you're going to say, well, if I'm going to look at television, I'm only going to look at it for this long or this amount of time. And when it comes to my prayer life, I want to give this time to God. When it comes to the time I want to spend with that word, I'm going to give this time to God. I want to be a part of it. I want to be an active member in my church. I want to be in the church. I want to be in the building. I want to be in the parking lot. I want to be where, 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 where I know the Lord is. I want, to, I want to be up under the word of God. I want to make sure I'm giving more time to God than I'm giving to the world. See, and this is why it's so very important that we pay attention to how we're managing our time. And then there's other things you want to do, might be going back to school. I want to go back to school because I want to I want to up my game. I want to get a better education. I want to I want to I want to be able to let's just say lead my church. I want to lead my ministry. I want to I want to be able to do those things that God has called me to do in a much better way. I want to evolve into a, 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 a more of a, a a man woman of God that the Lord can use. I want to evolve into that someone. So I need to do those things that's going to help me to up my game. Thank you, Jesus. That means I have to be willing to give up some time in study, give up some time in prayer, give up some time in fellowship. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. That's why I want to be around some folk that's got a plan, that's from folk that want to, that, that's in Christ, not doing necessarily what I'm doing, because all of us have an assignment, and all of us have been called to do that something that will, let's just say, bring glory to God's name. Are you hearing me? Bring glory to the kingdom. It's not about us doing our own thing. It's not about you doing your own thing. It's not about you doing you, because we're only here for some seasons. Lord Jesus, here for some seasons. You know, I went I, I, I went to one of the stores, one of the thrift stores yesterday, and there was a book that kind of interests me, and I brought the book home, and, and uh, I didn't raffle through the pages when I was in the store, but when I got home last night, I, I kind of like opened the book up and kind of went through it and started, you know, turning the pages, and I found an obituary in there. I said, wow. Wow, and it was a nice lady, I would imagine, and so on and so forth. And but I but I realized all of us, all of us are gonna go that way. All of us are gonna go that way. You know, and, and we have to be able to 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 know that this time that God has allotted you, it should count for something. Now I realized looking at that obituary, that obituary couldn't tell me everything it could about that woman's life but it told me that she was born in 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 1960 and she died in 2017 50 something years 57 years or something like that she was able to experience life none of us know how long we're going to be here and those of you who have gone the bible says in three score and ten if you're beyond three score and ten no you are blessed and still in your right mind, still able to move about, still able. Are you hearing me? So, you know, and then if perhaps four score, 80 years, man, <laughs> you have so much to be thankful for. And we know, at least I know, I know I didn't always make the best choices and decisions over my life, but I'm thanking God for his faithfulness. I'm thanking God for First John 1 and 9. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Thank you, Jesus. Are you hearing me? So, 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 you know, Proverbs 14 and 12 says, there's a way that seems right to a man, but it leads to destruction. Leads to destruction. See, see, when you're, ha when you're in the habit of living life on your terms and leaning to your own understanding, you have stepped away from God. 
Are you hearing me? You have stepped away from God's perfect plan for your life. You have stepped away from God's design and purpose for your life. You mm, are going in the wrong direction. It's no, hey, Paul says it. He says, it's no longer I who live, but it's Christ who now lives in me. Who's, ooh, Lord, who's calling the shots for your life? See, because if you're calling the shots, you, you're falling short and you're missing the mark. You're operating in sin. So we, especially as a believer, I'm talking about, I'm talking to the believer today. If you're doing your own thing, you have already fallen into sin, fallen into sin. See, when it comes to living this life, all of us are given 24 hours a day to manage our time. And as a Christian, we should be managing our time God's way. Ooh. Are you hearing me? Managing our time God's way. Now, I was looking at, 20, at Jeremiah 29 and 11. And here's what God says. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. See, the thoughts that he thinks towards us. In other words, God is always thinking about you. Why is that? Because you are special to him. Why do I say you're special to him? Because he sent his son to die on the cross for you. That's right, little old you. That, that's somebody that might not see themselves as good enough. That's someone that is struggling right now with a sickness. That's someone that is struggling right now with a relationship or without a relationship. Oh, I want, oh, I, oh God, I wish you would send someone into my life. Oh God, I wish you would just, I, I wish you would fix my relationship with my children, with my child. Oh, there's so much stuff going on in the world today, or should I say in our lives today that are designed to discourage us and to cause us to, to weep, Lord Jesus. Oh, why? Because I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here like this. I don't want to be here and have to go through this. God, can you please fix it? And then, you know, many of us want to give up because God doesn't fix it the way we want it fixed. When we're not realizing that God is using that to, 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 to strengthen us, using that to, 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 to grow us up, to mature us, and to develop us. God knows what you're going through, my sister. He knows what you're going through, my brother. And, and, and understand, if he's allowing it, I believe Job said something, yet though he slay me, yet will I trust him. See, it comes a point or a time in our lives when we have to trust God, even in those difficult times, and when God is not doing what we might want him to do it, because we want it done this way, but God is looking to bring the glory. He's looking to bring glory to his name, but more than that, he's looking to, to add something to you that you wouldn't get going another way. So understand, all things, everything is working together for the good. Why do bad things happen to good people? We're living in a fallen world. See, God wants you to use your time. Matter of fact, let me go back to that. Let me go back to that verse. Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. See, this is the blueprint that God, God wants us to live in peace, not in evil, to give you a future. He wants us to have a lively hope and expectation that our future is blessed. And as I said, at the end of this year, I'm hoping for a better year next year. I'm hoping that next year will be a better year. I'm hoping that next year I, I, I won't, I'll be healed. I'm hoping next year that I'll be restored with my family. I'm hoping next year, you know, hey, I, I want to see that change or that breakthrough. And, you know, I can hope for it next year. God can make it happen at the end of this year. We just have to be able to keep hope alive. And in the process of keeping hope alive, I need to keep on pressing for the blessing. See, that's what this is about. The blessing is in the pressing. And we need to be able to stand up under the pressures, under the hardships. You know, when I think about David, Lord, that giant slayer, what was it? It was his faith in God. It, it, see, when you, hey, 
Everything about David said that he wasn't going to be able to do it. He was a boy. He wasn't a, he wasn't a man that was, let's just say, that was groomed in warfare. He didn't, he didn't know how to, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't like, ooh, Lord gee. He was, he was, he didn't go to the school, he didn't go to school to learn the art of warfare. I'm not talking about the spiritual warfare. I'm talking about warfare, dealing with the weapons and, and so on and so forth and all of this other stuff. But the thing about it is, when I said, when you look at David, the man, or David, the boy, also understand with a slingshot, you mean to tell me you're going to kill this giant or you're going to stop or slay this giant with a slingshot? Everything about David said that he couldn't win or he wasn't supposed to win. Matter of fact, Saul wanted David to put on his armor, but David said, no, I, I can't, I can't, I, I'm not comfortable in that. Why? Because I, 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 I just, I, I slayed a lion and I, and I slayed a bear and, and, and I, I, got to, I got to do what works for me. But more than that, he recognized and realized his faith had to be in God. His faith was in God. And if God be for you, no weapon that is formed against you is going to prosper. Are you hearing me? We have to, we have to be able to stir up that mustard seed faith and know that there's nothing, my God, coming up against us today that can keep us down. I'm not going to say I won't slow down. I'm not going to say I don't get a little weary. But the Bible tells me, reminds me, don't get weary in well-doing. But in everything, my God, my God, I'm to give it my best. I got to give it my best. I got to be all in. Why? Because God has called me for such a time as this. Saints, you are in season. I'm here to tell you, you are in season. And God wants you to use your time in a way that would be beneficial to both you and to him. Or should I put him first? To him and then to yourself. Because we always have to place God first. See, are you hearing me? See, you know, that, that, that the acronym for joy is Jesus, others, and then yourself. So you have to be able to always place God first. Don't put him in the balcony. Uh-uh. Don't put him in the back of the line now. Uh-uh. He need to be in your front row. Thank you, Jesus. Why? Because, hey, the real deal is if you want to benefit, if you want to gain the benefits that he wants to give you, you have to keep him first. See, see, understand, he wants you to, to, to benefit. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to know that the best is yet to come. In spite of what you dealt with in the past, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, some people in the body of Christ, I'm not talking about the people in the world, some people in the body of Christ, they are still recycling the hurtful, shameful, painful past. Let it go. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. Why? Because he cares for you. And that care means he loves you with that agape love. That agape love. See, as you yield to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, your life will be or should be at least governed by his word. In other words, I'm going to live in accordance. With, his word will be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to stay the course. In spite of what comes, in spite of who comes and who goes, I'm going to stay the course because I know that God is faithful. He's been faithful to me. He's been holding me up. He's been blessing me in areas of my life. Ooh, I mean, you, you can't even begin to see all of what God is doing, what God is keeping from you. Every time you walk out of your home and you're able to return home after a, a day of being out in the world, you don't know, ooh, Lord Jesus, what God has kept you from or kept from you. We have been blessed. We are being kept by an amazing God, a miracle working, wonder working, ooh, God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what we can act or think. And this is another reason why we shouldn't take our prayers so lightly. Oh, like praying by rope. Oh, you know, our father, which art in heaven, we got to grow up and we need to mature. And when you're, when you're growing up and maturing in Christ, you're going to pay more attention to how you're spending your time. See, we have to let God set our agenda. God has to set your agenda. You know, hey, 
I, hey, let me say this. I thank every one of you for coming to the prayer line. I thank you, those of you on YouTube, visiting our channel on YouTube and viewing our, you know, these messages that are being shared. Hey, I, 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 I appreciate that. And I appreciate that. Why? Because it's let me know that my labor is not in vain. What are you saying? What can you say about your labor? Are you doing those things that are going to be a blessing and a benefit to others? You see, because understand God, God's plan for our life is always better than what we can, uh, let's just say, come up with for ourselves. Because we can want the best of everything. We can want the best of things that happen for us. But because we're living in a fallen world, we can't control the outcome of things. But God knows. And God can control what we can't control what you can't control see with god's plan you can prosper mm -mm -mm. and not only prosper now but you can also experience his joy his peace man man i mean there's there's some folk going to work they don't even want to leave the job because they don't want to go home to the contention and all of the strife that 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 is taking place in their homes you know, you have to be able to see the, the benefits of being, let's just say, uh, in the family of God uh, as a believer, someone who is striving after righteousness, holiness, wanting to know God's love, knowing, know his peace, his joy. Oh, man, this thing is, this is more than an experience. I'm talking about a lifestyle. See, an experience is something you can have for the moment. But I'm talking about a lifestyle, something you live daily. I'm living this daily. Hopefully you are living this daily. Daily I'm praying. Daily I'm having a talk with my Jesus. Daily I'm in the word. Daily I'm spending time, you know, with the saints and those that are, you know, like-minded. You know, because, hey, what I'm called to do might be different than what you're called to do. But long as we're doing that, what God has called us to do, that is what matters. Ooh, and then we have to understand now. Don't think that you're going to, because you've come to Jesus, that you're not going to experience. And as we all well know, that we're going to experience some strife. We're going to experience some stuff that is designed to knock us off course or to take us off that path, that path, I should say, that would lead to greater. See, understand the Lord is with you and he knows what you're going through. And, and you know what's so beautiful? I can tell you right now, my sister, my brother, you're not going through by yourself. Are you hearing me? See, the Bible says, the Lord says, the righteous will never be forsaken. See, the righteous will never be forsaken. You and your seed will never be forsaken. Why? Because the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. But according to Matthew 6 and 33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added or given, will be provided. God will make a way. He's able to make a way out of no way. See, God, God has a special plan to help us fulfill our purpose while here on the earth and you know something it is designed to bring you into your destiny god has a very special plan to help you fulfill your purpose see and this is why we need to stick to god's plan this is why we have to let go of our agenda our plans and understand that what god has for us is always better you have to be willing to love, trust, and believe in him. You're not going to trust someone you don't believe in, and you're not going to believe in someone you don't trust. So you really need to really take an honest look at your relationship with Jesus, your relationship with God. And sometimes we will give more, uh, let's just say, more credit or more, we'll pay more attention to people than we will to God or to his word. Many, in the, many, many of us in the body of Christ have learned to talk the talk, but our walk, but their walk is weak. Why? Mainly because they don't know how to manage 
their time. You have to be able to see the value and the importance of time. Today, all of us, every one of us, you out there in YouTube land, you on the prayer line, all of us should be thankful for every second, every minute, every day, every week, every month, every year that God has given us. You should be thankful. And I can say that, why? Because tomorrow is not promised to anyone. None of us have a guarantee on tomorrow, to see tomorrow. Are you hearing me? There's no guarantee, saints. You know, we talk about death and taxes. Well, there's some folk that's not paying taxes, but all of us are going to leave here one day. Understand now. See, God made an ironclad promise to you, to you, the believer, that he will never leave you nor forsake you. That's an ironclad promise. Why? Because God is forever faithful to his word. Are you hearing me? So in the course of managing your time, you have to do what you can to do what? To better yourself. And now let me just throw in as a sidebar, you have to make today count. And you do that every day. Make today count. And you make today count when you're managing your time, doing those things that's going to be productive, doing those things that, you know, I, I was going to bring you a word on, 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 on imagination, casting down imagination. See, we have to be creative. Creative. I mean, God has blessed you with a mind to create, to, 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 to bring forth some things from out of you and to be able to manifest it. Ooh, Lord, and bring it into the, uh, let's just say, into the physical world. It can start off as a thought or a plan or an idea, and you can work it till you bring it forth and materialize it into the world in which we live. Something that can bring glory to God, something that we can share or to benefit others, whatever the case may be. There's so much more to you than what you might be seeing even in yourself. Why? Because we focus on, the, on, on stuff and focus on things more so than focus on the things that are really of value. Your relationship, your salvation is of great value, but your time is also of great value. Matter of fact, Ephesians 1 and, and, and 4 says, according as he has chosen us in him, according as God has chosen us in Jesus Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us and unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So as I said, it's no longer I who live. It's about, hey, G, what do you want me to do? I have to totally surrender my life to God. Submit to God, resist the devil. Submit to God, resist the devil. See, you have to totally and completely surrender your life to God. And you're going to do that when you trust him, when you fully trust him. God didn't just plan for you to show up here on the earth at any time. You were part of God's master plan. And he placed a purpose and a plan for your life. You are here on purpose to fulfill a purpose. God knows what he is doing and he has a perfect plan. And guess what? He has given you a perfect gift to enable you to fulfill your purpose. And what's that perfect gift? That perfect gift is time. 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 Give more thought and consideration to time. And realize, you know, to check out the people you're hanging with, the people you're running with, the things that you're doing. And if you feel like you're wasting time and not living up to your purpose, maybe it's, maybe it's time for you to have a serious talk with Jesus. Are you hearing me? See, uh, if you're not comfortable with where you're at, if you're not comfortable with what you're doing and what you see ahead in your future, you can change it. 
With God's help, all things are possible. With the leading of his spirit, those of us who are led by the spirit of sons and daughters of God. So, hey, I want to, I want to, I want to do it God's way. I don't want to do my thing. It's not like God doesn't know what you're going through. And the problem that you have can become a weight. You know, can become a weight. God wants you to cast that weight. He wants you to cast your cares upon him. Cast it upon him because you're not going to be able to move to the next level carrying all of that stuff, all that junk, wasting time, time that you can't get back. He wants you to be productive. He wants you to be successful. Mm, mm, mm. And success doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have a whole lot of money. Because you can have a whole lot of money and not be happy. You can have a whole lot of money and be sick and your money can't get you well. I want to be successful in Christ. Understand that every day that you choose to carry your problem, you're wasting time. Every day that you choose to carry your problem, you're wasting your time. You're wasting valuable time. And you know what? There's, and there's a sidebar to that too. Because you're going to start dealing with anger. You're going to be mad. Because this comes with wasting time now. Because things are not going the way you want it to go. So now you're going to be angry. And a lot of times we're angry with those people that are there to support us, to, to help us, to, to be there for us. And then it's an amazing how when things don't go the way you want it to go. Now, I'm not going to church. I don't feel like going to church today. I don't want to hear the word. I'm not going to read the word. I, I'm not, I, I, and our prayer life even falls off. And then when all of this stuff begins to come into play, you know what happens? Another level of stress, or should I say strife, manifests in our life. Now I'm worrying and even, I'm starting to worry even more now. I don't see the good that's around me. I don't see the good that can come, that can come, you know, that God can impart or bring to me. No, all I see now is the hardships of life. Now I'm focusing on the things that are going wrong and not the things that are going right. Saints, stop trusting in yourself. Stop trusting in yourself instead of digging yourself out of a problem, you're burying yourself. When you're trusting in yourself, what you're doing is you're digging a hole, a deep hole, deep pit. And you're burying yourself. And God wants you mm -mm, to really, really come to a place where you're trusting in him. See, see, when you when you burying yourself, you know what you're doing? You're also burying a chance or an opportunity to succeed at what God has called you to do. Are you hearing me? Whatever God has called you to do, you're burying that chance. You're burying that opportunity to do, to fulfill, or to make happen, or bring about that what God has called you to do. Why? Because you made a choice and a decision to do it your way. Saints, I want to say this, and I'm going to close. I, I, let, me, let me let this go. You, 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 you can't be amazing. And I tell you every day, those of you on YouTube, those of you, you know, on the prayer line in the morning right now, those of you who will call in later today, I tell you every day, you are amazing. You know why you're amazing? You're amazing because you're not leaning to your own understanding. When you're not leaning to your own understanding and you're being led by the spirit, that's when you step into God's plan and you become that amazing man and woman of God. So please, don't make the mistake of wasting valuable time. Thinking about the time you have already wasted, you have to use whatever time you have left to discover God's plan purpose, and will for your life. Are you hearing me? This is so very important. See, because we can waste time on, you know, thinking about the time we wasted and, oh, man, crying and moaning. You can't get that time back. 
So get up, make a decision. I got to go forward. I got to forget those things which are behind. Got to let go of the hurtful, painful, shameful past. And I got to move in expectation, hope in a lively hope and expectation that what God has called me to, it is still available to me if I can make better choices and decisions over my life. Whatever time mm, you have left to discover God's plan, purpose, and will for your life. See, I, I use that word discover because really that's what this is about. You're on a spiritual journey of enlightenment. I want to discover what God's plan and purpose and will is for my life. But many have made a decision to create or recreate themselves into these false images or this reality, this worldly uh, 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 thing that they want to do the, the things that would they think will make them happy according or based upon the dictates of the world. It's not about that. If you want true happiness, you need to come to Jesus. You need to trust in him and you need to stick and stay for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. You know, see, because it's not about even getting tired or weary and well-doing. Hey, we're going to all get tired because you're still in this body of flesh. But you have to be able to press. You have to be able to keep doing what you're doing and trusting in the Lord, knowing that all things are truly working together for the good for those of us who love him. Saints, God love you. God loves you. And he wants you to love yourself enough to know that time is a commodity that you can't get back. So make the most of your time doing those things that's going to cause you to evolve into that man, that woman God sent you here to be. You're still amazing now. You're still amazing in spite of mm, your shortcomings. You're still amazing in spite of what others may say about you. You're still amazing in spite of the doubts and, you know, the things that you might be thinking of yourself. But Lord knows our biggest fight could be with ourselves, more so than with the devil or with anybody else. That's why we got to let go of anything and everything that's telling you you can't do it. I'm here to tell you today, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Learn to manage your time. Learn to manage your time and you'll be rewarded. You'll be rewarded and you'll be much more happy about, much more happier, I should say, about what you see taking place in your life and in your future. Praise God. 